All right, here we go. <laughs> Robin Nolan and thanks for joining this quick lesson where I'm going to show you something really cool you can do in your gypsy jazz soloing. It's called an enclosure and it's something which Django Reinhardt used a lot in his solos and I've kind of got a way of teaching it so you can use it yourself to play over chord changes um, and it'll really give you that kind of gypsy jazz Django Reinhardt sound. It's this thing we're talking about. You might have heard it. It's this kind of... Basically, the technical word for this thing is an enclosure. And uh, basically, I want to show you how to use these enclosures, how you can use them over different chords, and then start to use them in your solos to kind of get that gypsy jazz sound. So this will be a great little lesson. And uh, if you're watching this on Facebook or if you're watching this on YouTube, then send me the love, click the, the like button and leave me a comment. Let me know where you're watching from and come on over when you've watched this lesson to the Gypsy Jazz Transfusion Club dot com page and come over and check out the really cool stuff. Uh, we're opening the doors to the new Gypsy Jazz Transfusion Club this Saturday, the 21st of September. And uh, it would be awesome if you wanted to join the community and get help from me. And check out what all the guys have got to say below. There's lots of videos, there's hundreds of members in the club, and we look forward to welcoming you too. So welcome everybody. Enclosures, I've got a little lesson plan here as well. Django's famous enclosures, and we're gonna show you how to use them on minor swing. Now, step number one, because I like to break things down into easy, bite-sized baby steps, because I figure that's the best way we learn. And the first step, right, is to find the basic arpeggio, okay? So, you've got A minor, right? We want to solo in minor swing. We've got A minor, we've got D minor, and we've got E7, basically three chords. So how do you apply this enclosure to a minor chord? Well, step one, you find the basic arpeggio for that chord, right? Nothing fancy, just literally one, three, visualize that and see it on the fretboard then you're ahead of the game I'll show you how easy it is after that so you got right. Right, there's a minor okay now let's even just take the top half of that arpeggio right which is just that a minor chord there and then what we're gonna do right we're gonna do and it's called an enclosure because each of the notes in that arpeggio or in that chord a C, E, each of those notes, A, has got an enclosure around it. So each of these notes has got a note above it and a note below it, right? And the next note has got a note above it and a note below it. And then what's gonna sound like is this. It's gonna get that kind of real Django Reinhardt kind of sound. Now, let me just show you what you're gonna do. All you gotta know is the arpeggio, right? And then, the rule, right, this is the rule you've got to remember. You go from a half step below, so that's easy, one fret below each of the chord notes. So you got. So all you've got to remember for now is. Right, just one fret below each of the chord notes of the arpeggio. Right, so that's step one. Just go. Ba -do, ba -do. For us guitarists, you just drop a fret below each note. 
and then just get comfortable with that. That's the first thing, right? So just go. Just imagine uh, there's an A minor chord going down, right? And basically what you're gonna do is put it into a musical way and start to go. Just get your fingers. Get your fingers kind of synced, hopefully, synced with your brain, right? Synced with your brain, your fingers, your eyes, so you visually see where you're playing it. And most of all, what's most important is your heart, right? So actually kind of feel the emotion of that sound and get it under your fingers. And it doesn't matter if you start really simply like this, you can still make music. So you go. Right, so that's the first step. So it's a half step below, right? So in the A minor arpeggio, you take a half step below each note. Right, half step, that's one fret. Right? And then the next thing you take a scale tone above, right? A scale tone above. So right? And what I mean by scale tone, right? You've actually got to know a scale kind of thing is the A minor harmonic scale, which just goes no. It's that one you've heard all the time, right? So the rule is, right, half step below, right? This is how to get that enclosure sound. Half step below the arpeggio note and a scale tone above, right? So then you've got three notes. You've got the scale tone above, you've got the note itself, and you've got half step below, always half step below. Right, and then you move to the next note, scale tone above, fret below, move to the next note, scale tone above, which is half step. And then you kind of, like I say, using your brain, you kind of, your big powerful brain, <laughs> um, using your brain, using your eyes to visually see that, and using your heart to kind of emotionally attach yourself to that sound that we love, right? You're obviously watching this because you love Jango Reinhardt and that kind of sound. Get involved. Get uh, just let yourself immerse yourself in the emotion of that. Okay, and it's just a simple thing to do, but just don't look at it too mathematically. Hear that? Right. Okay. So the rule: half step below and a scale tone above. Okay. So you do that for the A minor. You move to D minor. Right, and then you do the same for that. So you take the D. Right, and it doesn't matter where you play. Um, there's your D minor, right? You can do it there. If you've got your D minor here, right, it's the same thing. There it is. I'm just visually seeing that chord and playing one fret below each note, right? Scale tone above, half step below, we've got. Right? Right, A minor. Just playing it slow. Just getting used to where all these notes. D minor. chord you got to do is over a dominant seventh. Now this is where the rule changes, okay? The little rule we've got, a scale tone above, half step below changes. So for a dominant seventh, it is, here we go, it's half step above and half step below. Okay, so when you're playing over a dominant seventh using the Django enclosure, you go a half step above, that's one fret, and a half step below, that's one fret. So, you take your arpeggio, there's E7, you just go E. Right, for example, if you're using that arpeggio, E, G sharp. It's just a regular major arpeggio. You take a step below, so a step below, a step below. 
step below, step below, step below. And then the other way, you can close it by one fret above as well. So it's just... Either side of the chord, of the chord. Right, just like. Right, so the dominant seventh, one fret above, one fret below. Okay, so A minor, we've got a scale tone above, fret below, so. Once you kind of understand the concept of what you do over the minor and over the dominant seventh and you start to see visually where it's happening right and it really gives me a lot of confidence because I know a minor for example then I can go just use an above right and it kind of all go Opens up the fretboard for you. You can see wherever you're playing A minor here, you've got the same thing. All right. When you get to the E7, there's another E7 kind of shape there. You've got fret below, fret above, for the dominant seven. Right, there's the chord, right? Once you've kind of got used to that visually, orally, you hear it, and most important, right, emotionally, your heart feels it, then what I recommend is putting it to music as quickly as possible. This is what I teach, okay? I get uh, my students to actually start using these ideas. This is just one little idea, right? Start to use these ideas over music. So if I was playing over minor swing, right, I would put the metronome on and use this idea, so. One, two, a one, two, A minor. D minor. Okay, coming up to E7. A minor. D minor. This is only used in closures. music as quickly as possible and apply it to a piece that you really know for example minor swing now this is just to give you the concept of this uh of this concept called enclosures Enclosures is kind of official name um it's a technique which has been played by you know beethoven and mozart and those guys Django Reinhardt used a lot in his solos and I think it'll sound great for your playing too. I'm actually going to be given a big full on Live with Robin masterclass on this whole topic in the Gypsy Jazz Transfusion Club on October the 1st. And we're also excited because we're opening the doors to the new Gypsy Jazz Transfusion Club on September the 21st. That's this Saturday. And come on over to Gypsy Jazz Transfusion Club dot com come and check out come and check out there's hundreds of members from all over the world in the club loving it if there's anyone watching right now who's in the club please type in say a few words about the club but it's a way where myself and the community can help you learn this music in a fun way right so get rid of the boring scary stuff replace it with fun and also save you time because I'll show you what not to practice and I'll show you exactly what you need to do to get better. And we kind of hold each other accountable and it's a great way to learn. You get all the best resources. So go to gypsyjazztransfusionclub.com 
and check out it, check it out. If you're watching on that page right now, look below, look at Train. He's from Iceland. He's a heavy metal guitarist who I've been coaching personally in the club and he's great, getting really good. There's Diego below from Argentina. I've been coaching him on his gypsy rhythm and he's improving. It's a way I can actually help you personally. So very enthusiastic about it. Come on over to the club. Okay, I'm gonna recap what the hell is going on in this lesson, right? We're talking about Django's famous, right? And when you hear them, you recognize them, right? Django's famous enclosures on minor swing. And I've got some rules to help you learn these. Number one, find the basic arpeggio. So if you're playing over A minor, surprise, surprise. Right? There it is. There's the basic arpeggio. Step two, half step below. Okay, that's easy. One fret below. chord you're going to use a scale tone above okay so step three have it upside down step three scale tone above so you've got half step below and a scale tone above this is critical right this is all you've got to remember so scale tone above right we're talking about the a minor harmonic scale and then that sounds like this scale tone above the note itself and a fret below the next one. The next one. The next one. Right, when you're on D minor, do the same thing. You can start on any note, say you start on the A. Right, scale tone above and a fret below each of the note of the chords, right? And then you'll start to get it and start to move it to different positions. For the dominant seventh, recap, what happens with the dominant seventh? Easy, we go half a step above and half a step below each of the notes in the arpeggio. So if we take E, right, E, right, and half step above, I can visually see the E there, right? I see this E arpeggio. to apply it to music so that's what you got to do right uh, and then the last point I got here is combine and have fun so what I mean by but combine is you don't have to always play it like you might go right it's still the same thing using the concept of enclosures so that's it. I'm going to leave you. This is just skimming the surface of this really awesome topic. I'm giving a full-on masterclass on October the 1st. Okay, October the 1st in the Gypsy Jazz Transfusion Club. I'll be teaching my masterclass on Django enclosures. Okay, I'll be showing you exactly where to use them on lots of Gypsy Jazz tunes. Okay, and the club members will see this. So you've got an opportunity to join the club this Saturday where we're opening the doors. So come over to Gypsy Jazz Transfusion Club. Dot com. There's a link just by this video somewhere. Come on over to that page and then check out what everyone's got to say about this amazing resource, okay? We look forward to welcoming you to the community and this is what I'm gonna say now. Stay inspired and most of all, have fun. I'll be back for another video in two days. Lots of love. Trouwen. Uh, I'm from Iceland and I'm part of the Gypsy Jazz Transfusion Club. Uh, I'm in a band called Skalmot, it's a heavy metal band and that has been my main focus for the past 10 years. Uh, I decided this August to join the Gypsy Jazz Transfusion Club because I love the music and I want to be better at playing it. And uh, already I can say that 
in the past six weeks. This has been absolutely fantastic experience for me. Uh, personal uh, teaching from uh, Robin Nolan, sending videos, telling me what I can do better and, and complimenting me on the things that I am good at. And I also decided that I would kind of throw away most of the things that I already know, just focus on learning new stuff and then adding it to my uh, knowledge. And I think that kind of works. And uh, it's always good to be able to ask Robin uh, for advice. So this is really working out well for me. This is good. This is exactly what I wanted. This is exactly what I need. I'm really happy. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Monty from England. Um, I'm here to talk a little bit about Robin Nolan's Gypsy Jazz Transfusion. Um, I've been playing a, a long, long time and I recently found out about the, the club through an acquaintance and it's really transformed my, uh, my attitude, my enthusiasm. It's really rekindled my great uh, affection for this kind of music because Robin, Robin's techniques are uh, so easy. It's a superstar in my eyes, but it's so friendly. It's so constructive. Um, the lessons, the values of the lessons are really good because I've always played rhythm and I'm trying to get into lead and it's slow enough for me to understand every time. Um, I've had great, great lessons in the past for some great musicians, but this one is different. This one is really different. Robin is really different. Uh, it cuts it down into bite-sized chunks for people like me who are just new to playing lead. Um, and the value to me is I've just bought a new guitar. I, I'm so enthusiastic. Um, I don't see I don't see this, this being the end, even though I'm in my sixties. I, I just see it as a new beginning, a really great, a really great um, resurrection uh, of something. And it's convinced me that I can play lead. <laughs> Uh, much to the annoyance of the league players, I know, because they want to play league. But hey ho, I'm here. I'm having a go. Uh, I really like it. I'm not. I see. I see progress every week. The videos through YouTube that I hear and see, I play them two or three times and go back to them. I know that my level of musicianship is increasing every week. You can't say I can't say that I'm a ten times better player, but I know that I'm a better appreciation. I have, I have a better appreciation of what it takes to become a good musician. I can only recommend the Gypsy Jazz Transfusion to Hi, I'm Morris Smott from Plainfield, Indiana, <clears throat> member of the Gypsy Jazz Transfusion Club. I just finished my live call with Robin, and it's absolutely fantastic. I love the Gypsy Jazz Transfusion Club, love what I'm learning, and I, I'm always excited to log in and see what's new.